thank you for joining in for our Christmas Eve service of carols and candlelight. Tonight, we welcome the birth of the Christ child, as Jesus has welcomed us. Wherever you're joining us from today, know that you are welcome in this place. Lord, hear the cries of your people. We stumble in the darkness of our sin, and we fear what we cannot see. Our lives, our hopes, our joys, our very beings have been consumed in darkness. The prophet Isaiah declares in Isaiah 59, we wait for light, and lo, there is darkness, and for brightness, but we walk in gloom. As we prepare to celebrate the coming of the Christ child, would you join me in singing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Isaiah 60 verses 1 through 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Let's sing of this light come to earth in the form of a baby. Join me in the first verse of Away in a Manger. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
you made this holy night shine with the brightness of your true and loving light. Grant that here, in all our days on this earth, we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in our last day, may we awaken to the brightness of his glory. We pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This night is about a baby being born. According to UNICEF, there are about four or five babies born every second of every day somewhere on this planet. Babies are born to rich people and poor people. Babies are born in cities and in refugee camps. They're born in democracies and in countries under dictatorial rule. Babies are born to every conceivable kind of individual and in every conceivable situation. And every time a baby is born, lives are somehow changed. Families are changed. Their little worlds are turned upside down. I can remember when my wife Jessica was pregnant with our oldest child, Isaac. How we so enjoyed those runs to stock up at Babies R Us and readying a room for his arrival. But we had made the mistake of convincing ourselves that our doctor had miscalculated Isaac's due date. Our doctor had said August 1st. We had arrived at July 1st by our calculations. Isaac's birthday, if you'd like to know, is August 3rd. So that month of July was an agonizing one for us, waiting for him to come and not knowing when it would be. Obviously, there are aspects of being pregnant that I just can't relate with. I'll never know what it's like, for example, to have a baby kick in my belly and wake me up at night. I'll never know what it's like to give birth, and believe me, I'm fine with that. But I can tell you, life in our home was very different before Isaac came to us and then after he was born. He turned our whole world upside down. So it must be a neat thing for mothers to connect with Mary this time of year. On one level, her pregnancy was not unlike your pregnancies. And her world was turned upside down by the birth of a child just like yours was, I'm sure. But then again, her pregnancy was just a little bit different from yours, wasn't it? Her conception was, well, unlike any others, before or since. So in Mary's time, being a teenager, not married, probably in shock at the angel's announcement and pregnant, her life was about to be very different, very difficult, if not outright terminated. I want to share with you this evening how Mary responded to this news that she would become pregnant and carry and bear the Son of God. This is Luke chapter 1, and verses 46 to 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown with strength his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Knowing the many difficulties and complications to come for her, Mary responded to this news with strength, with hope, and with courage. Mary responded with joy. Mary reminds us here that joy, abiding joy, is not dependent upon outward situations and circumstances. Mary reminds us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Because this night is about a baby being born, right? Jesus' birth didn't just turn a world upside down. Jesus' birth turned the world upside down. As Mary proclaimed, Jesus was ushering in a new order of things, God's order of things. Jesus was coming into the world to make this world habitable and joyful for every child of God, and not just for a privileged few. We live in a time when fear is rampant in our world. We're afraid of each other. We're afraid of people who think differently than we do. We fear for our health and the health of our neighbors and our loved ones. We're fearful of the future. I can remember our first year of marriage, just as we were discussing starting a family together, 
9-11 happened. And that made us very fearful of our world. It made us question just what kind of a world are we considering bringing a child into? Well, friends, I would venture to say while our world may be very, very different from Mary's world, I'll bet her fears and the fears of her people were not so unlike our fears today. And if Jesus' birth could inspire her to courage and joy in the midst of it, I'll bet Jesus can do the same for us. Now, friends, let's define Christian courage here. Christian courage is what we find in Mary's song of praise in Luke chapter 1. The courage to be humble. The courage to serve. The courage to sacrifice for the good of others. The courage to reach out and lift up the lowly. There is much and there are many in our world who can paralyze us with fear. But fear, friends, is very unbecoming of those who worship the eternal God and of those who know his Son who saves us, who came to us at Christmas, who lives in us and inspires us to joy and to live courageous lives of faith. Let's make Mary's song our song as well this Christmas. Let's refuse together to give in to fear. Let's trust together in our loving God. Jesus' birth turned the world upside down. There is still much in our world that needs realigned with his grace and with his love. Let's celebrate his birth this evening, and let's resolve to follow him in the days ahead with great courage and in the Christmas spirit of Mary to sacrifice, to serve, and to challenge the systems of oppression in our world. Jesus came to set us free. May our world be free of fear this Christmas, free of fear, full of joy, and full of peace. May God fill all our hearts with joy and peace as we sing together, Silent Night. Light your candles and join your voices on this special night.
Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy Would you join me in a word of prayer? Most gracious God, we give thanks that you have heard the cries of your children lost in darkness. We joyously celebrate the birth of your son, whom you sent to be our light and to show us your way. Remember your people this night and always. Let the brilliance of your grace dispel the gloom in our lives and let the glow of your gospel glisten brightly in us, so that we may be your light to the world. In the name of your Son, our Savior, and our light, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Go in joy, fear the darkness no more. May the light of this child light your way forever. May the blessings which broke through the darkness on this night be yours always. May you always have cause to sing praises, give thanks, and celebrate the true light of the world, our Savior, Jesus Christ. No more, let's sing.